Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm so happy that you're able to join us today. But just so you know, we are in our classroom library here at our school. We practice this several times this week. And uh, you know what Zoom is like and techie difficulties. Uh, we're all three in the same room. And our sound might all interfere. We're trying to do it so that it doesn't for you. If, if you show yourselves, you can always give us a thumbs up or down if you're having a problem with the sound. So what a pleasure this is to have this platform to be able to share and inspire fellow librarians, teacher librarians to become facilitators of your school's Heritage Fair project. My name is Patricia Codling, but most people know me as Pat. I work at Cornerstone Christian Academy, a school in Richmond that has approximately 300 students from preschool to grade seven. As a librarian at Cornerstone for the past 22 years, golden opportunities to enhance students' education present themselves in many forms. And my motto is to always kick it up a notch. The Heritage Fair project presents itself as more than a golden opportunity. Within our school's Heritage Fair, my capacity as teacher librarian allows me to provide the resources for the exploration of Canadian history, often drawn from students, cultural heritage and personal interests, collaborate with and support staff and students, familiarize myself with the big six historical thinking concepts and the inquiry-based learning, visit oral uh, classroom oral presentations, pose questions often influenced by the rubric provided for assessing students' completed projects, and also participate as judge at both the school's mini heritage fair and the regional heritage fair. Today, along with two teachers, in this presentation, we will share what is the heritage fair, the different levels of the heritage fair, what does it look like, and why, um, um, how do the students benefit? How does the Heritage Fair project fit with the BC Ed Plan? And how is the Heritage Fair project implemented in the classroom? And then we'll have the conclusion. You know what? I bet you all this time you've been wondering, what in the world is this woman doing wearing this outfit? <laughs> now, if I were a student participating in the Heritage Fair and presenting my topic to the judges at either the school or regional fairs, I could choose to dress up as the historical character of my project. So here I am, all dressed up from head to toe. Can't quite make it. My big inquiry question might be, how could paddling canoes along the Great Lakes be instrumental to developing the fur trade? At this time, I am so pleased to introduce a fellow teammate at CCA who teaches one of our grade six classes and participates wholeheartedly in the Heritage Fair and also was instrumental in bringing the project participation from one grade five class to all the intermediate grades, four through seven. And this is Karen Russell. Karen will illuminate what the Heritage Fair is, levels of, what it looks like and how students benefit. Over to you, Karen. Well, thank you, Pat. Uh, we just noticed that some of you have been coming in. I know there's been a problem with Zoom. At least we had a hard time. So uh, I'm just going to say on behalf of Pat, who is the teacher librarian, and Sharda and I are the teachers, welcome here to uh, this Heritage Fair presentation. So just a brief background. Uh, Ten years ago, I was a long-term sub at this school and was advised that I would be doing Heritage Fair with students. I had no idea what this was about. In desperation, I turned to two people, Pat, the librarian, our verger here, and Charlotte, the grade four teacher for help. Instead of just helping, Charlotte decided to dive in with me and oversee Heritage Fair happen in our classes. And ha Pat helped us stay afloat and swim. Just a side note, uh, Sharda and I are wearing red t-shirts. These are our um, Heritage Fair shirts that we received in the past few years. So um, we're not voyagers, but we thought we'd put on the Heritage Fair Spirit t-shirt. So what is Heritage Fair? It is a bilingual showcase of history projects, grades 4 to 10, past, viewed through inquiry, research method, 
appreciation for and curiosity about Canadian history. And there are many topics, everything from Canadian heroes, historical achievements and issues, famous landmarks, influential people in the arts, sciences, literature, sports, connection to global community, Aboriginal culture, family history, and so on. And there is a site here at the bottom, a link that we're not going to open up due to time, but uh, we have uploaded all kinds of links and materials for you uh, that you can access at the end of this presentation. Well, let's continue. Here at CCA, as we have all students take part in the Heritage Fair for term two, that's grade four to seven, we weave into our big ideas for each grade. And as you can see, grade four, uh, Explorers, Gold Rush, Fur Trade, grade five, Government, CPR, Canadian Symbols, etc. And you will notice that as we get to the higher grades, the topics become broader. Grade six, Canada and the world. In grade seven, passions project. It is their choice. Now, you might be asking yourself, can a student who is ELL on an IEP is gifted to participate? The answer is yes. We have had students in a very wide range of learning abilities participate. Last year, as a matter of fact, one of my students was on the spectrum with a full-time EA and gave a very good oral and trifolder presentation. So now let's look at the different levels of Heritage Fair. The first one is the individual fair. Before students attend their school heritage fair, lots of work must be done. And Charlotte will be talking about this aspect in more details. We begin in January, and it is at this time that the teacher librarian plays a key role, and that is you. Providing resources, going over what a bibliography is, facilitating the inquiry method. Once all this has happened, the individual fair takes place, and at our school, it is in March, and this is where the teacher library plays another crucial role, and that is judging students' project at the individual fair. You can see from the pictures here that we are in the gym, and we set aside one afternoon for all other classes, parents and administrators to visit and interview students about their research. At the end of the fair, the teachers and Pat our librarian, shortlist projects for the regional heritage fair. Now, depending on how many classes, and we have six classes at the intermediate level, and projects that are at the school fair, approximately three to five projects from each class are chosen to go to the regionals. So um, there is another site up there, and that explains more about the levels. And again, that will be referenced in um, the resource that we'll pass on to you later on. So let's go on now to the next level. This is the Regional Heritage Fair. Between April and May, outstanding projects from across the region, in our case, it's Richmond, approximately 100, 100 projects are showcased. So students who created these projects are invited to participate in a two-day program of Heritage Fair activities. So Friday is a full day, and then Saturday, um, there are other activities that they can attend. Um, the awards day is Saturday, so everybody likes to go to that. <laughs> They will also be interviewed about their research by a panel of judges. At the end of the fair, the judges and fair corners shortlist projects for the Provincial Heritage Fair. Now, because of all the input that Pat gave and the knowledge of the topics that Pat and that all of you librarians have, Shard and I re recommended her to be a judge at this regional fair level. And you can see a picture of her there. Um, now, I would also like to add that this past year, both the regionals and provincials were held virtually. So this was from a couple of years ago. I'm not sure what's going to happen this year. Well, let's go on to the next level, the provincial level. Usually, every second fair is in Victoria. And this year, it was obviously virtual. In July, those that received the stellar awards at the regionals, that means three to five projects, out of 100 are chosen from each region from across BC, and they are showcased at the Provincial Heritage, Heritage Fair, which takes place in a different city in BC each year. Those students who created these projects are invited to participate in a week-long heritage camp. At the end of the fair, students are invited to join the BC Heritage Fair's alumni team and help spread the Heritage Fair spirit. 
And again, there is another site there, but the site that we want to um, show you now is of a grade six student from last year who made it to the provincials. And because it was virtual, um, we have the interview recorded and we'd like to um, now show you just a snippet of that interview. And as we go along, you can see there are all kinds of different projects here, and you're welcome to come here. And you can see that um, somebody dressed up. And uh, you also see these icons, interview and video, and I'll refer that. This was a student from our um, class who also did on Viola Desmond. And this is the project that I would like to sh um, highlight for you, Vancouver. And then a CC, yeah. So Charlotte, if you could go ahead with the interview. I believe I need to mute myself. All right. All right. Uh, you can get started whenever you're ready. Of course. Hello, I'm Cece from Cornerstone Christian Academy, and my project is Chinatown Story. Vancouver's Chinatown is my topic, and it tells the story of how Chinatown within a century has transformed from a small, risky settlement to an attractive tourist destination and finally a preserved historical site. Um, and despite its meager beginnings, how it has still made a lasting contribution to Canada and that concludes its significance. Vancouver's Chinatown is located in downtown Vancouver and takes up six commercial blocks. So uh, Cece was then, she gave her presentation and she then, sorry, there's a bit of a feedback here because we're trying to figure this all out. Um, and then she uh, was asked some questions. And the, the gal that's asking here, Ben Danchi, she is actually uh, also went to the provincials and now part of the alumni team. So we're going to just go to that one question. It's uh, 8.40. Thank you. Nelly. After the Fraser River Gold Rush, the Chinese went to work on the Canadian Absolutely. So kind of related to that, how important is the multiculturalism policy that you mentioned uh, in terms of the acceptance and recognition of different communities like that of Chinese Canadians? It's actually um, really important because without it, um, Chinatown wouldn't have been going through that much vitification, even if it still was before the policy was announced. And it also acknowledged um, Chinatown story and just put it out there as published in, in the publicity. And um, to show that this is a story that you should all learn about and it acknowledged Chinatown's significance. Great. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. So um, thank you. Uh, if you look at the tab next to the interview, you'll see there's a video tab there. And that is that all those that went to the provincials were invited to, um, this was an option of theirs, to create a very short video about their project for the Young Citizens video. This would give them the opportunity to re represent their region in Ottawa. So feel free to go back to that and you'll see as you scroll through, some did a video, some of them didn't. It was about four minutes long. Um, but that is the next level of Heritage Fair, the Young Citizens video. So thank you. We'll go to that next slide. There we go. And now, you heard a lot from us, from me, but let's hear the students' voices on how they benefited from Heritage Fair. And as we told you, our students go from grade four to grade seven to grade five. 
first student said, by letting me understand how to work with others and understand more about Canada, it helped me in my learning because it helped me be more specific and more open-minded. Grade six, it has improved the way I research. I used to search a whole question, but now I only search the most important keywords in grade six. I learned how to get better at oral presentations, how to speak clearly and how to speak loudly. And for grade seven, we have these comments. Heritage Fair is a process that allows us to explore Canada and its history in an engaging way for us. And again, this is where the teacher librarians come in and play this really important role. I've learned how to make a guideline, starting with choosing my inquiry question to presenting my project. It's just something to encourage motivation levels. It also got me into studying history, like an actual historian. And finally, I want to close this presentation, this part, with uh, summarizing with this statement. It is a great learning experience and a great way to show creativity. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Now we're gonna go on and further display the collaboration between teacher, librarian and teacher. I'm very happy to introduce a second staff mate who teaches grade four and escalates the students' production of the Heritage Fair project to great heights in her class. Charlotte Sakaki will now share how the Heritage Fair project fits with the BC Ed Plan and how it's implemented in the classroom. Charlotte? There we go. I think we're all good now with the sound and muting, unmuting and sound. So thank you, Pat. As mentioned, I'm Charlotte Sakaki and I'm one of the grade four teachers at Cornerstone. I love that you've chosen to be at this workshop today. And I'm going to assume that you're one of those daring teacher librarians who's on a mission to help bring inquiry-based learning into the classroom. And my goal at this point in the presentation is to show you how Heritage Fair is a very doable and effective way to engage students in a meaningful cross-curriculum project at the classroom level. And to help you start imagining how you could play an important role in inspiring and collaborating with classroom teachers as you see the various parts of Heritage Fair projects today. As a classroom teacher, I truly appreciate our teacher librarian, Pat, as a champion of inquiry-based learning. Her involvement and support of the students and teachers at Cornerstone really does make her a fierce change agent at our school. So as you learn how Heritage Fair connects to the new curriculum and how it gets implemented at the classroom level, I hope you'll get even more curious and excited about Heritage Fair and choose to be daring by sharing your enthusiasm with some like-minded teachers at your school. One of the beauties of Heritage Fair is that it completely supports the intent of the new curriculum. All aspects of the core competencies come into play, especially creative and critical thinking. And then inquiry-based learning is involved as well. Students ask big, question, big questions for their topic. They investigate through research. They create a trifold and artifacts. They discuss their work in the form of an oral presentation. And then finally, they reflect on their work at the end of the project. And as mentioned earlier by Pat and Karen, the big six historical thinking concepts provide a specific lens for students to view their topics. Also, the inclusive nature of Heritage Fair aligns with First Peoples principles of learning with its many access points and opportunities for choice. And then lastly, Karen had mentioned about global issues as well. They're often addressed and it allows students the opportunity to think beyond their own small world. So now that we've done more than tick all the right boxes, for supporting the new curriculum, you might wonder what this looks like in a classroom study setting. And so hopefully um, this web of components that I've created for you will make things more clear 
and will help you see the process that students go through learning um, leading to their end project of a trifold artifacts and then their oral presentation. But to put it bluntly, it's basically a map to sanity. And when you're in the thick of a major project, you always need some kind of a map. And I really rely on seeing all these components broken down so that I know where I need to take my students, where we're going next, and they can also follow along with that as well. So I'm gonna somewhat take you into my classroom by showing you what students do at the grade four level to get from choosing a topic to presenting their project. And I'm gonna share some images of documents and um, some of the things that I use to guide them through that whole inquiry process. And I'm gonna show some examples of their work. So then hopefully you can see what's possible at quite a young age uh, with the right scaffolding in place and then also the right supports. So the first thing that students do is they choose their topic and then they create their big question. And at this point in the year, they're already familiar with historical thinking concepts. And they're given a handout that has the prompt. So that's the handout that you see on the right um, for each concept. And that will help them form some possible questions for their big question. And eventually in my class, I have them create three big questions and then get them to choose their best big question. And these two handouts are the ones that I typically use to work through that process. And then next, um, in my class, we'll, before we even start our note-taking for Heritage Fair, we'll revisit note-taking and what that looks like. And we'll practice how to keep our notes brief using only keywords. We'll highlight important words, and then we'll learn to do simple bullet notes by taking just a very simple passage and going through all of those steps. Then in another lesson, at the start of note-taking, we'll go through the steps for creating um, and setting up their bibliography. And so you can see I've got my nasty magnetic um, paper there on my whiteboard. And I will take time and we'll zero in on all the punctuation, all the proper spacing, and the students will practice from a few books so that when they go to do their heritage fair, they actually know how to put together their bibliography. And then once all the note-taking is completed, um, using both primary and secondary sources, and then our image collecting is done, the students then start to begin to use their notes. And they will write their paragraphs, they'll write captions for their pictures and for their artifacts. And before Heritage Fair even begins, we'll have already completed a unit on paragraph and informational writing. And then the students, they will already have learned how to create a good lead, a topic sentence, how to use transitions in their writing, um, how to expand their ideas, and then also how to write a good conclusion. And then another lesson that I give them before they start writing their captions is um, helping them see that when they write their captions, they aren't just going to state the obvious. This is a canoe. And that will be very typical to what students will write down. This is a painting of Simon Fraser. Instead, I get them to use their research, find out what's something significant that you can state very clearly that will inform your audience something new that they don't already know about the topic. And then typically students will also put together a timeline of important events. And I'll usually give them a graphic organizer like the one you see from reading A to Z. It's a really nice, easy one for them. And they'll get that early in their note-taking stage. So they can start to collect dates and events that are important to their topic. And just like other parts of their topic and their project, you'll see that they're encouraged to get creative with their timeline and tie it to some kind of central theme so that um, it pulls everything together in their project. And then as the students start moving into the later stages of creating authentic artifacts, they're still required to pull in all aspects of their learning. And they'll show that in another format, which will be their artifacts. And then basically their research should be incorporated into the detailed aspects of their artifacts. And the use of these artifacts is just another way 
of educating their audience about their topic and their inquiry question. And this is where many of the curricular competencies of ADST and fine arts are incorporated. So it's always great to see how some students really shine in this part of the project, and they can articulate their learning much better, both visually and orally, making learning accessible for all. So some students might really struggle with the paragraph writing and the note taking, and yet do an amazing job in being able to stand in front of their art attack, their, their art attack, their artifact, and, um, and really be able to tell a lot about what they've learned. Then when it comes time for students to bring all of their learning together in a visual way, they do this through the creation of their trifold. And many cross-curricular skills and core competencies are brought together in what I call a big jamboree of learning. And so lots of these skills come into play, such as their math skills in using a ruler for properly measuring. And you'd be amazed at the number of times we need to go over this and repeat this and practice it and apply it. Um, as you'll give the demonstration lesson, and then you will still see students cutting their things in the air with no lines drawn. So we go over that quite a bit. And then also fine art skills of using artistic judgment in balancing images and their written work. And then making an aesthetically pleasing background that connects to a theme. So hopefully these pictures um, capture some of the joy that goes into inquiry-based learning, as well as the fact that it gets students out of their desks and into what I call messier and more active learning. And then I have to be honest in saying that every year uh, I go through this and also my teammate, um, the other grade four teacher go through this panicky stage of thinking that our students just aren't gonna be able to pull it all together and complete a quality project and actually show some understanding of their inquiry question. But as I mentioned earlier, um, this is somewhat messy learning and it has a lot of moving parts. But in the end, the students always seem to rise to the occasion, especially when they've been given the tools, the guided steps and the encouragement along the way. And our teacher librarian, Pat, does an amazing job of walking alongside us and um, helping with many aspects of that. And so the projects that I'm sharing with you on this slide help hopefully help you see that all the work and all the effort that goes into participating in Heritage Fair is well worth any of the challenges that might go along with doing something that I consider daring. And so on that note, I'll end by saying that our team here today, uh, we'd love to see you go away inspired to be change makers at your school. I'm gonna turn things back over to Pat and she's gonna wrap up our session. Thank you, Charlotte. I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun to walk through all those projects and see how creative the kids can be and their big questions and their slogans at the top of their boards. It's just so, so much fun and very interesting. So as we conclude with a couple of tips for you as librarians to maybe get started, first, I need to clarify uh, back to that original costume idea and the question, how could paddling canoes along the Great Lakes be uh, instrumental to developing the fur trade. You've had a hint a bit previously, but who do you think I am? I think you heard it said, voyageur, right? I'm the voyageur. Well, you know, nothing is more exciting than knowing that it is the people in powerful positions as the teacher librarian who can be instrumental in creating a pathway for collaboration between the teacher librarian and the teacher because teacher librarians are experts after all in information technologies. They're curators of the library resources. They're teachers of information, literacy skills, and promoters of lifelong learning in students. Important. As a collaborator, we are change agents and leaders. The school librarian develops, promotes, and implements a program that will help prepare students to be effective users of ideas and information. The Heritage Fair provides a great opportunity to do exactly that. 
It engages us in the intent of the new curriculum, making us as teachers and librarians more informed. You know, this all might feel a little daunting. It always is when you just hear it if you've never heard it before. So just start with one small step. You could contact your local BC Heritage Fairs coordinator, and that's at the website bcheritagefairs.ca under coordinator resources and offer to be a regional heritage fair judge. I personally have benefited greatly from participating in this capacity. Also, as a regional judge, I witnessed new schools entered for the first time each year that I perform that function. So there's always somebody that is just beginning. And they might miss little parts, but it doesn't matter because it all becomes a very learning experience. Or maybe you know that one teacher in your school who you know would just love to take on to this, take on this project and approach them and you make them your ally and work as a team. After all, that's how we started way back in 2007 with one grade five class, one teacher and one librarian floundering about because at that time we didn't have a clue what we were doing. But we, that experience certainly helped us to grow. And, that, and now we have the whole of all our intermediates, four to seven participating. The single significant benefit we receive by participating in the regional fair clearly is that it provided opportunity for us to observe other schools. That was very helpful. Make connections with others and learn about new resources. One resource you're receiving today is us. And we're very happy and would love to help you along the way, help you get started. You could contact us anytime with questions. There are uh, personal emails at our school. Uh, we are also very well supported by local museums, heritage societies, and government programs. Um, I've pointed out the two particular websites, bcheritagefairs.ca, because they have loads of information. And then our local museum is the richmondmuseum.ca, um, and they just contain a wealth of information, step-by-step -step of how to take part, a suggested timeline. Now, we at our school here begin mid-December, but in January is when we pick our topics, and that then we go on from there up to, up to the end of term two, right? Yeah, and then um, there are seven steps to a powerful heritage fair project and much more in these websites. So helpful. Now we've included, as mentioned, both the ladies have mentioned before, resources and information that we've uploaded for your use. All the, our websites, our, our email addresses, um, also um, the thing, the uh, little booklet that Charlotte prepares for her students. So please help yourself to those, um, go to them. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're, we've um, come to the end um, to remind you that uh, as you leave, don't forget to visit the vendors and do the letter hunt and win some prizes. I hope we were able to inspire you today because um, to be just that particular teacher librarian who seizes a unique opportunity and is willing to take a step toward facilitating the Heritage Fair project within your school and creating that pathway between teacher librarian and classroom teacher.